Hi, I'm Kirby with Augustine E-Bikes. And for the last several months, I've been traveling around the country visiting family and friends. So I haven't published any new videos on our channel in several months. I'm now back and excited to share a whole new series of videos with our YouTube audience. I've been riding my new 1500 watt kit with built-in controller in Santa Cruz for the last month and have decided to take it to the bike under different conditions. So I packed my bag and put my bike on the Highway 17 bus that takes me 40 miles north over the Santa Cruz Mountains to San Jose, the heart of Silicon Valley. Now if you're familiar with Silicon Valley, I'll show you some trails that you're probably not familiar with. The bus stops in downtown San Jose, just one block away from the beginning of the Guadalupe River Trail, a trail that follows the river 15 miles north to where it empties out into the San Francisco Bay. When I lived in San Jose 15 years ago, this trail didn't exist. But since then, the city has spent a lot of resources investing in bike infrastructure. So now there are tons of great bike trails throughout the city, which is the third largest city in California. About a mile out of downtown, the trail passes San Jose's Panetta International Airport. Now this trail weaves its way through hundreds of Silicon Valley tech companies on the one side, while enjoying the beautiful preserved ecosystem of the Guadalupe River Basin. Now it's amazing how much wildlife can be seen along the trail, given its proximity to companies, airports, highways, and more. As you ride the trail, you'd hardly get a sense that you were riding through the middle of a city of over a million people and one of the largest economic engines in the world. Over time, the river has been rerouted. The Guadalupe is one of three major waterbeds that cut through San Jose. There's the San Thomas Aquino Creek, Coyote Creek, and the Guadalupe, all of which have miles of beautiful, beautiful bike trails. Given the hundreds of thousands of workers from around the world who come to Silicon Valley to work, it was clear that it made economic sense to invest in alternative transportation infrastructure, such as bike lanes and trails, to accommodate a much more diverse workforce. The trail ends connecting to the Bay Trail, which follows the San Francisco Bay from North San Jose north to San Francisco. The San Francisco Bay Trail is a bicycle and pedestrian trail, and as of 2020, 356 miles of the trail have been completed, linking 47 cities across nine counties and crossing seven toll bridges. The trail provides recreation for hikers and cyclists, viewpoints for wildlife, space for environmental education, and corridors for bicycle transportation, as well as access to historic natural and cultural sites, including over 130 parks. The trail takes me through beautiful Baylands Park, which is the gateway to the Bay Trail, heading north towards San Francisco. I hit a strange object, so I pulled my bike over to check my rear tire before riding on. Uh, it looks like everything's okay. The Bay Area has over 500 miles of trails that circle San Francisco Bay. And what's great is how much of the Bay is protected reserved so it can't be developed. And you can ride for miles and experience the same landscapes people did 100 years ago. It's really a biker's paradise. One of the reasons I wanted to do this trip was to concentrate on trail riding, unencumbered by cars in contrast to the manic non-trail riding I experience daily in Santa Cruz. San Francisco Bay is a shallow estuary and is dominated by the large cities of San Francisco, San Jose, and Oakland. San Francisco Bay drains water from approximately 40% of California. The bay covers somewhere between 400 and 1600 square miles. And despite its urban and industrial character, San Francisco Bay remains perhaps California's most important ecological habitat. 
California Dungeness crab, California halibut, and Pacific salmon fisheries rely on the bay as a nursery. The few remaining salt marshes now represent one of California's remaining salt marsh. The Bay Trail parallels Silicon Valley's many cities such as Sunnyvale, Mountain View, Palo Alto, and many more. And these are home to some of the world's most influential companies such as Google, LinkedIn, Facebook, Yahoo, Intel, Hewlett Packard, and so many more. Now it's time to find my hotel and check in. It will give me time to drop my gear off and get ready for some more riding before it gets dark. I chose to stay in an extended stay America hotel, conveniently located two blocks from the Bay Trail, allowing me to continue the ride in a matter of just minutes. Today I'm going to ride through some of Silicon Valley cities and get a sense of the roads for about 20 miles before heading back to the trails. Now this is an area I'm very familiar with having spent the last 20 years in the Bay Area. But because of COVID, I haven't been back in a year. One of the first things I'm noticing is how empty it is everywhere. Parking lots are empty, the roads are empty. I mean, this is in the middle of a, a weekday when this usual area would be crowded with cars. I don't think I've ever seen it like this. I'm only a mile from the main Google campus, which on a weekday would be almost impossible to get through because of the number of people. This is obviously the result of everyone working remotely. It's great for me because there's no traffic. The other thing I notice is how much this area has been developed since I was last here. It seems such a shame to see these millions of dollars of investment growth empty, just standing empty. I wonder if it'll ever actually get back to normal. The word silicon in the name Silicon Valley originally referred to the large number of innovators and manufacturers in the region specializing in silicon-based MOS transmitters and integrated circuit chips. The area is now home to many of the world's largest high-tech corporations, including the headquarters of more than 30 businesses in the Fortune 1000 and thousands of startup companies. Silicon Valley also accounts for one-third of all the venture capital investment in the United States which has helped to become a leading hub and startup ecosystem for high-tech innovation. It was in Silicon Valley that the silicon-based integrated circuit, the microprocessor, and the microcomputer, among other technologies, were developed. Now, pre-pandemic, the region employed about a quarter of a million information technology workers. Here's another Baidu car filming uh, Silicon Valley. Baidu is a Chinese technology company working on creating self-driving cars, and I've seen a bunch of these today. I've ridden about 20 miles and have seen what I wanted to see, so I'm heading back south to explore the San Thomas Aquino Creek Trail, which is west of the Guadalupe Trail I took yesterday. It should be about a 12-mile round trip, The creek trail has been built gradually over the years, starting from the north and moving south, with isolated trail segments being connected by bridges, undercrossings, etc. The creek trail is an important feeder trail to the San Francisco Bay Trail, which I just got off of. It brings people from residential and industrial areas in Santa Clara, a city near San Jose, to the Bay Trail that runs between Sunnyvale Baylands, which we were, and Alviso, the small town in the northern part of San Jose. Now there's a cluster of attractions that are at stone's throw from the trail along Tasman Drive, including the Santa Clara Convention Center, Levi Stadium, which is home to the NFL's San Francisco 49ers, and one of the most popular amusement parks in California's Great America. The San Thomas Aquino Creek is a stream that starts in El Sereno Mountain in El Sereno Open Space Preserve in Saratoga, California, 
and it flows north through the cities of Saratoga, Montesinero, Los Gatos, Campbell, Santa Clara, and San Jose, of course, before its confluence with the Guadalupe Slough in South San Francisco Bay, which I've already shown you. Now, after a 45 mile ride today, I'm heading back to the hotel for one more night. Today's my final day in Silicon Valley, so I'm taking the Guadalupe Trail south to downtown to catch my bus back to Santa Cruz. These last three days, the weather has been great, the rides have been fun and informative and incredibly beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed this video sharing Silicon Valley with you guys and hopefully learn something about some trails that you may not have known about. Starting the trail at El Viso, a small former fishing and shipping town on the southernmost part of San Francisco Bay. It's also home to the Don Edward San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge, the first urban national wildlife refuge established in the United States. And it's dedicated to preserving and enhancing wildlife habitat, protecting migratory birds, and protecting threatened and endangered species. The Guadalupe River Trail is the spine of San Jose's growing trail network. Running north to south through much of the city, portions of the trail run along both banks of the Guadalupe River, with signs informing trail users where they must cross. Plans call for the trail's two open segments to be linked in the future, but for now, trail users must experience the two sections separately. The northern segment begins in Alviso, a community situated at the southern end of San Francisco Bay, and here the trail connects to the Highway 237 bikeway, a component of the larger San Francisco Bay Trail. Now continuing south, the trail passes beneath most roadways, including State Route 237, 101, Interstate 880, as it works its way into downtown San Jose. Now closer to downtown, the trail enters the Guadalupe River Park. It's a three-mile band of parkland offering a host of recreation and entertainment. 